You're listening to MPS Connections with your host, A.J. Hoffman. Welcome to MPS Connections. I'm your host, A.J. Hoffman. And today I am joined by Kim Funnel, Margaret Doan, Kara Stark, and Chelsea Solvay. Did I take it there? Okay. You got it right. All right. <laughs> It'll be the first and last time I get it right the whole show. <laughs> Today we're gathered because we want to. Uh, I wanted to to learn a little bit more about Title One, and um, wh what it's all about, where the funding comes from. We hear a lot about Title One in the community and as teachers and administrators, but we don't really explain it. It's the same thing with like acronyms, right? We we have all these acronyms, but we never really explain what they all mean. <laughs> so so who wants to start first? What is what is Title One? What's it all about? Yeah, thank you um, for asking the question and inviting us today. Um, Title I is a federal uh, fund. It's a supplemental fund that is um, allocated to school districts based on a formula um, of the number of students that qualify for free and reduced lunch. So a per pupil amount is determined and that number is multiplied by the number of students that qualify for free and reduced uh, meals. Um, and the district is given an allocation in the springtime to plan and utilize um, for additional supplemental supports for the next school year. Okay. Kim, I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but do you have like numbers as far as what our population looks like or, or anything like that? Um, so we have two Title I buildings um, that are both school-wide buildings, and so if we just looked at those buildings, um, our free and reduced lunch percentage is around 60%, 64% at Central Park and, and around 35% at Plymouth. Um, we do have other buildings in the district that have um, a fairly significant free and reduced lunch population, but before me, the district um, determined to utilize the funds at the earliest level, and so uh, we share the supplemental funds between Central Park and Plymouth. And how do school districts receive Title I funds and how often? So school districts receive an allocation once a year. Um, like I mentioned, in the springtime, the Department of Education, um, Federal Department of Education, shares with each um, participating state a state allocation um, for Title I. And then the state uh, works to provide allocations to the um, LEAs, the school districts in the state. Um, and then it's the school districts that determine which buildings or populations are served in their school district. So we receive it once a year. We plan in the springtime for the upcoming school year. Um, we always have an opportunity um, to amend or change plans if we receive additional funding. So I mentioned in the springtime we receive an estimated allocation. There's a lot that happens over the summertime. Some schools relinquish their allocations. Other schools um, participate in Title I for the first time. So that estimated allocation is not final until usually October or November after all the ins and outs happen. Um, at that time, we, we may receive additional funds, but we're also given the opportunity to use any unspent funds for whatever reason from the previous year. So. So it's, it's a 12-month um, uh, fund, but we actually get to utilize those funds for a total of 15 months because we have three additional months that we can use the carryover funds. Okay. What are the requirements for schools that receive, receive Title I funding? So there are a few additional requirements that um, Plymouth and Central Park have to uh, make sure that they are tasked with and, and, and get accomplished each year. Um, one of those is um, they, they need to take part of that money and serve and support families um, through different engagement opportunities. Um, and, and later on in the podcast, we'll, we'll highlight some of those. Um, but we, we have to also uh, seek out input from our families, um, how to use the funds, how, how we provide the supports that are, are going to best meet the needs of their kiddos. Okay. What are some of the more creative things that teachers and admin, administrators have done to, uh, to help provide for classrooms with these funds? So one creative thing that um, we've been able to do kindergarten through fifth grade within Plymouth and Central Park is um, a supplemental math program. So in addition to our district curriculum of Envisions, 
we have something called strategic intervention solutions and within that it gives really hands-on coaching to our teachers so um, sometimes coaches will come into the classrooms and model teaching um, they also provide hands-on um, manipulative for manipulatives for students um, so it kind of gives us more of a range of things that we can do to support our students um, and also supports in what other interventions and things that they may need within math. So, okay. and, and, go ahead, Kira. and another one um, that's taking place right now is Plymouth and Central Park do something called Kindergarten Readiness Program and it's really targeted for incoming kindergarten students and the whole purpose is kind of to help support that transition into kindergarten. It can be really challenging and you know students are nervous coming into a big school um, at a young age and so we are able to have um, our kindergarten teaching staff, our paraprofessional support, and then also family intervention specialists being able to be present to kind of go through a shorter version of the day of what kindergarten will look like. Um, and some of the students get to ride a school bus and they get snack time, do tours of the building, um, eat lunch at school. So being able to go to the cafeteria and see how all of, um, all of that runs through their normal day when they come to kindergarten. And in addition, I think one of the benefits of that is really we're able to have eyes on students and be able to see how we can partner with the parents and just support students as they transition into kindergarten. Um, and then we also have another portion where on the last day we do kind of like a family engagement partnership with them and parents come in and we celebrate the week of the students um, going through their kindergarten readiness program and able to kind of speak to parents on just what to expect for their kids coming into kindergarten and um, just kind of see what it's all about. Margaret, you just said you were doing some of that before you got here today. Yes, right? today was day one, yes. so it's an <laughs> exciting day for everyone, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I should have introduced where you guys are coming from. Margaret is the principal from uh, Plymouth Elementary and Kara and Chelsea are the principals over at Central Park Elementary. So the two Title I schools, as you mentioned, the yeah. Kim, those are, the, those are the, the two buildings that we have Title I at. Correct? Yeah, that's okay. correct. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is the impact of Title I on student achievement, and what are the benefits of Title I for students? Um, I'll go ahead and start, and then please fill in some of the, some mm -hmm. of the gaps. Yeah. But um, so as we mentioned, Title I is, is a supplemental fund, and so we are really working to um, provide supports to the whole child. Um, it's, a, it's a model that the state of Michigan has adopted, whole school, um, whole child, whole community. And through the additional dollars, we're able to provide um, more staffing in various um, entities that, that help the students um, work through some of their uh, challenges and you know, really play on, on their assets um, to raise up academics. We know um, children aren't able to learn as well if, if their social emotional health isn't, isn't in the right place. I can speak yeah. to that. Two of the positions that we both have at our schools are we have what we call Title I paraprofessionals, um, and then we have a family intervention specialist. Mm -hmm. And what those positions, kind of like Kim mentioned, those Title I paraprofessionals uh, work with students who might need additional intervention to what the teacher is giving, um, and they really help support that academic piece, whereas the family intervention specialist is more of that tier one um, social emotional support. Uh, we're fortunate with the way that works out, so we have that family intervention specialist to help with those, um, you know, maybe smaller things that just need to be kind of cleaned up emotionally, or maybe a kid was going through a hard time and they can help with that. Um, and then at the next level up, we have additional supports through our um, student support specialist, um, and then up into our social emotional learning coaches. So um, that family intervention specialist really is that nice tier one for all of our kiddos to have access yeah. to some additional support. Yep. Very cool. Carrie, did you want to add to that at all? Or no? no, I think that, yeah, we have, same things there. Yes. So. Okay. How can parents and communities get involved in Title I programs? Every fall, one of our requirements is um, to have within the first 30 days of school, uh, we have to have a, a Title I um, 
Family Information, Parent Information Night, um, where we share what our budget is, um, what our, our planned spending is, and ask for parent feedback. Um, so that will be happening in both of our buildings in the fall. Um, I know we've talked a lot about, we do it in person, um, but we've talked a lot about how to reach more people, so possibly having some sort of recorded thing or sending it out as an um, email blast, um, but we're still, I, at least I am, I'm still tweaking that. And I think um, as far as parents or community, um, we hold family engagement nights. That's a huge part of Title I and really just that partnership. Um, and so we um, have had, like for instance at Central Park, we did a healthy, healthy family night mm -hmm. um, where we partnered with different community members or community, um, like Midland Community Center yeah. stakeholders. Uh, community <laughs> stakeholders mm -hmm. and we um, just hold events and the whole family can come we usually have dinner for that's a mm -hmm. huge piece we're able to feed people and just kind of talk about how to partner and um, provide different supports for students or families and then we always do um, perception surveys also after or just to get feedback on how the night went, any ideas for future events that they would maybe want to learn more about. Um, so I know that you know we've held a reading night also and an M-step night to be informational. I know Plymouth has done some different ones too. Yeah, um, we've done a math game night, which was really successful last year. We were able to invite families in to play different games focused with a math focus. Um, and then we were able to send the games home with them um, so they could then That's continue cool. to play those. That was really nice. nice. Um, and then we also did a literacy night and kind of focused it in the spring around the beach and doing things so parents were able to come in and read on a beach towel, make a little beach ball with comprehension questions. It was really nice. It worked out really well. That's cool. Yeah. Well, you both kind of answered my last question there. I was going <laughs> to say, how, if families and community members wanted to learn more about Title mm -hmm. I, uh, who could they contact in the district? Building principles, mm -hmm. um, and if it's a question that maybe we can't answer, we could always, you know, turn them over to Kim. Mm -hmm. um, but I think starting at the building level is best. We always want to connect with parents, you know, at that level first, and, and see how we can work together. So, very cool. Mm -hmm. Got some really cool things in store for this school year. That sounds yes. awesome. Yeah. So, was well, there anything else you any of you want to to add? I, I'm just appreciative of the opportunity to come um, for have you, you know, ask yeah. us some questions and help us um, share the great things that are happening in these two schools mm -hmm. because of the uh, federal Title I dollars. So thank you very much. No, okay. absolutely. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. It's, well, I, I like having topics like this, especially if I don't know anything about it. Yeah. Just coming in completely cold and just kind of, okay, tell me everything you know, you know. So yeah. great topic and, a, a, yeah great program for sure so uh, well that's our show we'd like to thank all of our listeners around the district around the country and around the world for tuning in we have we've launched a district Instagram page it's been going for about a year now <laughs> but you can find us and follow us by searching for the handle at Midland Public Schools if you have a story idea a photo op or an event you'd like to promote you can email us at communications at midlandps.org thanks for listening to NPS Connections and we'll catch you again pretty soon in the next month or so. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Do you have an idea for a podcast? Email us at communications at midlandps.org.